This is Gareth Southgate, and this is the Three Lions Podcast. Hello. And welcome to the Three Lions Podcast. My name is Russell Osborne and this is an independent England of football supporters podcast. How are you? I hope you're well. Hopefully January isn't dragging along too much for you. Uh, there's still a little while until our next scheduled games, Brazil and Belgium in March. And the Lionesses, you'd imagine, in February can't remember if I mentioned it on a previous episode or if I just tweeted about it. A fair bit has happened in the last month or so. Uh, But there will be no Arnold Clark Cup this year for the women. Uh, The Arnold Clark Twitter account announced on the 18th of December that there wouldn't be a tournament this year because of the Nations League finals taking place at the same time. It's just a shame. But I say you'd imagine there's a chance of some friendlies being played although at the moment nothing has been announced but as and when anything is announced uh, and scheduled I've no doubt I'll be chatting with Rich Laverty nearer the time. Actually just going back to that Belgium game for the men that's uh, scheduled for Tuesday the 26th of March at Wembley. As of the time of recording this No tickets for that game have been placed on sale yet. Now, you'd imagine that they'll be coming soon, uh, especially as the Brazil tickets uh, three days before the Belgium game, well, they went on sale on the 13th of November and sold out pretty much immediately. Those two fixtures, Brazil and Belgium, they were actually announced on the 6th of November. And I know that there was the the Euros tickets uh, mi- early December, mid-December. But it does seem strange that the Belgian ones weren't on sale at a similar time. I remember a few years ago, quite a few years back, actually, tickets went on sale for a March fixture. And the tickets were dispatched with the idea of being a gift to give for Christmas. I think it came with a Christmas card, if I remember correctly. But nothing this time. Now, the the cynic in me says the FA, much like any other business, has financial targets to meet, and the Brazil tickets were basically they knew would be a quick sell. Who knows? Uh, There might be a perfectly plausible explanation. To me, just seems a little disjointed as to why Belgium, the tickets haven't been sold. or there hasn't been a, a ticket sales period for that just yet. I don't know. Now, uh, this is a bit of a landmark episode. It's actually episode 300 of this podcast. 300, eh? Wow. Genuinely never anticipated getting this far. Um, Launched back in 2017 by Ryan Power. I came along in episode five in April of that year. God, seems a long time ago now, just thinking about how how we came together, um, how I, or sort of where I was recording at the time to where I am now, um, and just sort of, the way I took it on, God, it seems such a uh, a long time ago. But here we are, just shy of seven years. Seven years. It's quite a ride. Uh, so as I'll continue to say, thank you, as always, for joining me and supporting the show. Without you guys contributing, listening, it wouldn't be where it is. So thank you couple of things though following that first episode of 2024 with Russell Woodward uh, he told me about his England journey uh, which is a great episode it's still available at your podcast provider of choice if you've not heard it yet Uh, but a few other people asked about the Ko-Fi 
account um, that I mentioned. Should you like to contribute to the domain hosting of this podcast, just head to co k o dash fi f i dot com forward slash three lions podcast co dash fi dot com three lions podcast. Few of you already have, and it has been most appreciated. Thank you. Uh, and as I say, that episode with Russell Woodward, um, his England journey, threelionspodcast.com or your, your podcast provider of choice. As I say, if you want to share your stories of your time following England, be it the men's team, the lionesses team, just drop me a note. Happily get you on. Now, also, it was a pleasure to appear on Channel England Football's recent episode over on YouTube talking about the Euros later this year with two friends of the podcast, Gary, Channel England's host, and also Dom Smith from the Evening Standard. Both, no doubt, will appear again on here on the podcast in the not too distant future. But you can find that video on YouTube. Just search Channel England Football. Uh, And as well, back in December, I was also invited onto the Scottish Football Forums podcast with the the good guys from there to discuss the draw. Should you want to tune into a Scottish podcast, just search out Scottish Football Forums podcast. I understand, and and I'm sure they would too, if it wasn't a high priority for, for England fans. But speaking of the Euros, I've got something here that I hope will be of interest and help to you. You may remember when the Qatar World Cup came around, uh, I spoke with England fan and Qatari resident Ben Williams, who provided us with an insight into the country ahead of the tournament. Went down really well. Now, with the countdown to Germany well and truly on, I thought we need to do the same. So a little while back, I spoke with a friend of the show, Marco Kunauer. So we know our opponents, we know our kickoff times, we know where we're playing, and many of us will know how we're getting there. But how much do we really know about Germany once we get there? About Gelsenkirchen, Frankfurt and Cologne? We need some inside information ahead of the tournament. We need a local voice, a native to Germany. Who better to speak to than German resident and England fan? Welcome back. Marco Kunawa. Hiya, Marco. Yeah, hello, Russell. It's an honor for me to take part again at your post- podcast. Yeah. Oh, well, it's, it's always great to have you back. Happy New Year to you, 2024. Yeah, thank you. The same to you and all my English brothers and sisters. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a big year, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. It will be a most exciting years of the last ones because now it's coming home. It's coming home to Germany, and hopefully in Germany we will have the success which we are waiting for many, many, many years, and we will get the European champion even in Germany. It would be perfect. It would be the dream, the absolute dream. Yeah. <laughs> well, many of you uh, will will have heard of Marco. Many of you will know him. There is a previous episode we've done where we spoke together, and uh, you can find out how and why Marco is a uh, an England fan. So I'll, I'll point you in that direction later on. But um, let's just crack on with this one. You you live in Germany. You live in, it's just on, on the outskirts of Hamburg, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, perhaps 40 minutes away from Hamburg. We live uh, in the near of Kiel, between Kiel and Hamburg, directly in the middle of it, it's perhaps yeah, forty minutes away in the north of Germany. Yeah, it's the Baltic Sea and the Northern Sea. Yeah, they, they are not far away. Only perhaps with a car, thirty-five minutes, forty minutes maximum. Yeah, gotcha. So it was actually Hamburg um, where the the draw was made for the Euros uh, last year. What what was your reaction to the draw when we? 
when we were drawn with Serbia, Denmark and Slovenia. What were your initial thoughts? Yeah, I wasn't um, really excited because um, I think I expected or I hoped for some other um, some other teams. Um, but in reality, yeah, I think it's okay. I think we have a really good chance to pass the group stage. And um, I think Serbia is very interesting because um, in Germany live a lot of Serbian people and they will support their team. So it's guaranteed that there will be a very brilliant atmosphere in the arena and outside the arena. Yeah, also Denmark is not far away. Denmark, the Danish border is from where I live. Uh, one hour away, so the, the Danish people haven't a long travel to come to Germany. It's very easy for them. Yeah, and Slovenia, yeah, it's okay, but it's it's not very exciting, um, uh, not a very exciting team. So I think it's okay, but um, yeah, I was hoping for some other teams, but yeah, it's it is like it is. Yeah, I, well, I think it's a, a similar reaction to maybe what some England fans over here have had. Uh, but the important thing is to just get through the group, um, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for so sure. So it was 2006, the last time Germany hosted a, a major football tournament, 18 years ago, um, and then 18 years before that, the Euros in in 1988. I mean... Germany hosting the World Cup in 2006, that must have been a... Do you remember what, what the feeling was then? Is it similar to what the feeling in Germany is like now? Yeah, I think so. But you must think about one thing. The German team is actually in a very bad um, situation. They are not... Um, a very good football team actually at this moment and the atmosphere in Germany um, yeah to the German team is a little bit split um, the hope from the German residents is, is, is there that, that Germany will pass the group stage and will go to the knockout stage and uh, the atmosphere in in, um, in Germany I think will be brilliant because 2006 was the so-called um, yeah summer of dreams or, or, or miracle summer in Germany, you know. And here was a brilliant atmosphere, and um, I think this time will be also a very very heavy and brilliant atmosphere because all my mates and also my colleagues are speaking at this moment about the Euro. Everybody wanted to get tickets um, for the Euro. Everybody's speaking about it. Um, yeah, even if Germany will be successful or not, the the atmosphere will be brilliant, I think. And that's in, in the summer. Yeah, you know, the, the German people were very disappointed about the World Championships in Qatar in the winter time. It was uh, a really bad atmosphere here. Nobody was interested in. So I think this time, the next year will be, yeah, I think, Nearly the same like 2006. Everybody is waiting for it. Everyone's waiting. The, the excitement's building. That's right. Well, yeah, for sure. Let's let's just take a um, a little look at some of the cities that England will be visiting for for each of their three group games. Uh, we kick off against Serbia on the 16th of June. In well, all of our our group games are all based, quite fortunately, in the sort of western half of, of Germany. Uh, and the first one is in, in Gelsenkirchen, um, and that's going to be played in in what they we know as the, the Veltins Arena, but they're going to be rebranded because of sponsorship contracts and all that sort of thing. But it's the home of, of Schalke, isn't it? In yeah. The, uh, the uh, the arena Alf Schalke. Now I've I've heard that Gelsenkirchen maybe isn't the nicest of cities. I this is only from what I've read. Um, it's a, it's a mining city, I believe. Is that is that a fair comment? Yeah, it's a very fair comment. Gelsenkirchen um, isn't a very beautiful city, and that's the reason. Um, that I've never been in Gelsenkirchen <laughs> because it's, 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 it's a workers town. Um, and, and it's not very beautiful. 
the cities around uh, Gelsenkirchen are much, uh, much more beautiful. But the arena, the arena of Schalke, now the Falkins arena, is a brilliant one. The atmosphere is very, very heavy in this arena because um, they can close the, 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 the roof and it's very good. Um, it's, 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 it was built it was built very very good and the atmosphere for the fans is brilliant so even if the city isn't the best one in germany or the, the nicest one or beautiful one in germany the arena belongs to the top five in germany that's for sure oh okay i mean it's it's a fairly big stadium with about fifty thousand, i believe yeah and an incredible an incredible noise yeah the the the, the, the noise um in in the arena is very very high and intense and uh, you can feel uh, you can feel the atmosphere with every with every cell of your body it's really really amazing so it's a really really um, uh, adventure to visit the 13th arena it's really really great arena i'm a fan of this arena okay. but not of the town but of the arena yeah is is that what sort of people of germany will say that maybe gelsenkirchen uh isn't a a nice place is that what a lot of germans will say yeah for sure yeah is is that because it is like a, a mining city yeah 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 that's the history of gelsenkirchen because of the mining and because of the hard work and so on and it was a great city for many 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 years they made a little bit restoration <laughs> in the last 10 years but um it's not the nicest city in germany yeah okay well let's let's leave gelsenkirchen then uh, and move on to frankfurt that is where we will play denmark on the 20th yeah. of june that's the yeah. the deutsche bank park and it's going to be known as the the Wald Stadium, I believe, home of Eintracht Frankfurt. Yeah, that's right. And with Frankfurt, you mentioned Frankfurt. Uh, Frankfurt is um, an absolutely brilliant city. I was many, many times in Frankfurt, even for work. I was working for the German bank, for the Deutsche Bank. Ah. So I visited Frankfurt a lot of times. But that's not interesting for, for our, our brothers and sisters. The most interesting thing is there are um, a lot of pubs, of English pubs, Irish pubs. There is a so-called Bahnhofsviertel area around the main railway station is a is a district. So yeah, you can say a red light district, pub district, and it's brilliant to celebrate, to have a beer to have food, to sing in the streets, and there will be building up a massive, brilliant atmosphere. You can believe it, because they are living so many people from so many countries from all over the world, also criminals, so you have to be a little bit careful in the night and dark streets. I can advise every England fan to be a little bit careful in, in dark streets, but normally in the night, there are pubs, there, people are sitting outside. Everything is um, very good located. You can walk to every pub, you can walk to the railway station. You have everything uh, around you to go by feet. Yeah, you need no, no car. And the traffic system is very, very good. And um, there's, a, there's a mine river. You can sit at the mine river. Yeah, it's a summer evening. It's a brilliant city i love it so much it's from what i can see it's maybe a, a a business city but also has some a fair few museums and that sort of thing and and of course it's i mean as far as i'm aware it's known for its sausage as well isn't it yeah for sure you're very good in fond russell yeah for sure um it's it's very famous known for sausages yeah 
And the business, the business district, yeah, the business district, there's nothing um, after uh, six, six, six p.m. Every, every, everyone is going home. But in the other areas, um, as I mentioned, it, it's the railways, it's the main railway station. Uh, there's a lot of amusement. There's a very famous zoo with very, very special animals, museums. And so on. You can eat perfect Frankfurt sausages, and there are very good restaurants in the in the um, railway in the main railway station district. And the people will love it. Our 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 fans will love it to be there. Good. Is the stadium close to the center? Yeah, it's not far away. I think um, about. I think perhaps 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, but it's no problem. The traffic system here in Germany is very good organized. Yes, yeah, they, they, they built up the, the, the traffic, uh, the trams and the, 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 the buses massive for the, for the, for the uh, match day, for the match days. And there will be no problem. Everything is here well organized. So it's no problem to go to the arena and go away from the arena back again. To the to the Frankfurt City, it's 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 absolutely brilliant. That's what that's what we 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 like to hear is Germany being well organized. Yeah, it is, <laughs> and um, I can say even if you are not um, staying in a hotel, perhaps in Frankfurt or Gelsenkirchen or or Cologne, it's no problem to choose another town nearby, perhaps 20 minutes or 30 miles away. It's no problem. You go into the into the uh, train, drive perhaps 30 minutes, um, and you are in another town. It's no problem. It's, 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 it's very, very good organized here. Are you hearing at the moment in Germany of a lot of accommodation being made available for for overseas fans yeah there are a lot of accommodations but the problem is that the prices um rise up like a rocket and that's a really problem so i can advise everyone not to choose accommodation in the city where we are playing um, but to choose a accommodation a city nearby it's much cheaper as an example i am for myself was looking for a hotel in frankfurt yeah for two days and the price I think was 600 euros to 1000 euros for two oh. days. And if you choose, if you choose um, a city nearby like Darmstadt or Mainz or something like that, it's only 20 miles away. Yeah. You only pay perhaps 200, 250 euros for, for two or three days. So it's much cheaper. So it's a good solution or a good advice to choose a city nearby and not, a, not directly Frankfurt or Cologne. It's, it's heavy, um, um, in relation to the prices, um, which you are paying normally. It's, it's, they are rising up extremely. Uh, good, good advice. And, and I hear as well that there are, the the Deutsche Bahn, uh, the trains are are looking to do some good prices. Is that right? Yeah, I heard about it. I think you. I, I'm not sure 100, percent but I think with a ticket you have a free free traffic. You have a, you have the possibility to to ride for free. Um, but I'm not sure about it. And otherwise, you have a so-called a uh, 49 euro ticket where you can drive through throughout Germany. Um, I don't know if it's available um, also next year. But until this moment, you have the possibility to travel for for cheap prices. Yeah, it's it's no problem. It's not so expensive here. And we have also group tickets where five people together could use one ticket, and it's it's really cheap. It's it's no big problem. Good to hear. Well, let's move on to Cologne. Uh, is that how you yeah. pronounce Cologne, or is it Köln? Köln. In Germany, you you speak it Köln. Köln. It's, Köln. It's, it's pronounced in Germany Köln. Yeah, and and the, the, the foreign people say Cologne. Yeah, but in Germany, it's it means Köln. Yeah, and uh, the big rival of Cologne is Düsseldorf. The is it's, 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 it's very important for our fans. If you are in Cologne, never, never, never order an 
alt Bier. That's the specially the, the special thing from Düsseldorf. Uh -huh. And in Düsseldorf, you should never, never, never order a cold beer. If you will do that, they will throw you out of the pub. It's, <laughs> it's no joke. Really? They hate each other. Yeah, really. Alt and cold. In Cologne, everybody is drinking cold. And in Düsseldorf, everybody is drinking alt beer. And it's a very, very um, uh, big rivalry between these, these two, two beers. Yeah, yeah. So never, never order in Cologne an alt beer. Please order a Kölsch, yeah. <laughs> so what, what is a Kölsch beer? A Kölsch beer is a, is, is, it's, it's a, 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 a beer, light, help. It's very good tasting, and the Düsseldorfer beer is a little bit more dark, a little bit more more um, heavier than the Kölsch. So there's a little a little difference. For my for my person, I love uh, I like more the alt beer from Düsseldorf than the Kölsch, but it depends um, on everybody's um, taste for for yeah what what everybody's liking for her, for himself. Yeah, of course. Well, I've been to Cologne. Um, I went yeah. for a I went for a Christmas market um, a, a, a good few years ago, and it was a I remember it being a a beautiful city of a with a massive cathedral. But the, yeah. the from the the football perspective, it's the the Rhine Energy Stadion, home to FC Köln. But what what else can you tell us about Cologne or Köln? Yeah, Cologne, Cologne is a very, very beautiful city. With a, you mentioned it was a big cathedral, a massive cathedral. It's, it's it's famous for this cathedral, and also the Kölner Ring. It's called the Ring, the Ring. Yeah, the Ring means it's a party zone. It's the Ring. There are a lot of pubs, a lot of restaurants, a lot of cafes. A lot of discotheques, clubs, and so on. And in the evenings, there's a lot of um, possibility to have a lot of fun, to hear music, to celebrate, to drink. And um, it's a never sleeping, uh, the, the rig is never sleeping. There's party all the time. And our people will love it. Um, it's a very beautiful city. I like it. I like it really. Cologne is uh, one of my favorite cities in Germany with special people. The people are very, very friendly and they they love to celebrate. They speak to to foreigners with no uh, problems. Um, it's 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 really a very good area in Germany. Cologne, Düsseldorf, it's really really nice area. I see. Now from from memory, I went to. Uh, I went to see the stadium. There was no game on the the day that I went, um, but it was just I was I was looking for something to do. From memory, yeah. it's about maybe a, a twenty twenty five minute tram journey from the city centre. Is that is that right? Yeah, it's right. Perfect. Yeah, twenty twenty five minutes. Quite, I remember the stadium being. It had like a a long walk up to it and. Like the stadium is is surrounded by some, uh, maybe a park or or some fields. Yes, that's right. Yeah, you described it and, and you described it perfect. Yeah, that's that's right. That's correct. Yeah, no, I seem to seem to that was that was my memories. But out of all those three stadiums, you would say that that Gelsenkirchen is the the better stadium, um, but maybe the the worst city. Which, which is your which? Do you, would you say Cologne would be the better city, but maybe the yeah? Because I sure. think that's the smaller yeah. stadium. Yeah, a smaller stadium, but it's a better city. Um, but I think it's not so bad. It's it's also okay. And erste FC Köln or erste FC Cologne, it's also a very famous club here in Germany with a great history, with a very good fan culture. Yeah, they have a lot of very good and enthusiastic fans, and I think the city is is it's even even more beautiful than Gelsenkirchen, the arena Gelsenkirchen. I think it's a better one, but yeah, everybody has or everyone has to see what he likes more. Perhaps there are a lot of people who likes more Cologne, 
perhaps more Gelsenkirchen. I think Gelsenkirchen in the evening, in the night, it's it's a more beautiful, it's a more beautiful arena with a, with a massive crackling atmosphere. But also the Cologne arena is also nice and also with a very very good atmosphere and with a beautiful and 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 perfect city in the background. So you can do nothing wrong with it um, to stay there for two days or so. It's it's brilliant. You can even go um, over the Rhine to Düsseldorf to see Düsseldorf. Düsseldorf is not far away, only divided by the Rhine River. So it's everything is nearby. So it's yeah, we're fortunate that all those stadiums are are in a close knit area of of lots of towns and and cities. That's so good advice. What other advice could you give to? to visiting people coming to Germany for the European Championships? Yeah, I think, yeah, it depends where the people where have their, their hotel. But I think a very good advice is um, when they have time and when they stay, perhaps for um, for the time, not only for the, for, the, for, the, for the next days, but also perhaps for some, some, some more days here in Germany to visit Berlin for sure. Also Hamburg, Hamburg with a Reaper band and um, a very famous pub called London Pub. Yeah, it's the Hans Albers Platz directly at the Reaper band. That would be um, a must do when you are in Germany. Yeah, for sure to visit, um, perhaps to visit some Eastern cities like Leipzig or Dresden. It's also very good advice when you are interested in culture or in old buildings or in football history, um, these are two cities also brilliant, um, brilliant um, for with a r- very, very good atmosphere for, for, for celebrating with pubs, with restaurants, with very friendly and nice people. So in the eastern part of Germany, it's a must do to visit Leipzig or Dresden or both cities. Yeah, and it's not very extensive over there. And um, I think it's a must-have. Perhaps we are playing in Leipzig. Um, that would be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. We. That's the thing because of the the nature of the tournament. We don't know who or whereabouts we will play in the yeah in the, the round of sixteen, the quarterfinals, semifinals. I mean, the the one definite will be Berlin in the final. Hopefully, we will be there. So. That that hopefully will be our opportunity to go to Berlin. Yeah, for sure. I booked my hotel for the final, also for the semi final. So um, England, it's it's a must that England go to the final because I booked my hotel. It's <laughs> otherwise it would be not so good for me. No, no joke, joke, joke by beside by side. Um, no, I think when when the people are going to Berlin, I think a lot of people also visited Berlin in the in the in, the, in but Berlin is a, is a is a must. Berlin is a brilliant city. It's my hometown for over forty years. Yeah, and I lived in Berlin for for Berlin for forty years. Now I'm living in the north, as you mentioned it at the beginning of our interview. And Berlin is a brilliant city, a brilliant city, and you must visit Berlin. And you have the opportunity to to visit a lot of buildings with a lot of culture, and even the arena, the Olympia Stadium, is a massive arena and um, very good located. You can go there with a with a train, perhaps um, twenty five minutes from from the Kudam. From the former centrum of Berlin, from West Berlin, or from Alexanderplatz, the centrum from East Berlin, it's perhaps 30 minutes you at the arena. And yeah, I think um, it will be brilliant when we reach the final, or if we reach the final, yeah. Let's let's hope so. Well, we've got, well, what have we got? About six months until we uh, until we make our way over to Germany. I remember the last time, uh, 2006, there was talk that there was about. A hundred thousand England fans travelled over to Germany um, for that, and I, I wonder if there'll be a another invasion of England fans once again. I hope so. I really hope so because it will be building up a brilliant atmosphere, and um, hopefully, a lot of England of England fans will come over here to Germany for for for, for the games for the match days. Yeah, that would be really, really brilliant because um, even if you have a ticket or no ticket, 
Um, there are a lot of opportunities to um, do public viewing, to watch it in the pubs, um, um, to have, I think, perhaps, perhaps, um, that's my personal opinion, um, you will have a better atmosphere either at the public viewing or even in the pubs, uh, even, especially in Frankfurt or Cologne, as in the arena, yeah? Um, but that's my personal, my personal opinion. I, I also like it and love it to, to watch the game and a uh, public viewing on a pub with my English, English mates around me. Yeah? And it's also brilliant. Even if you have no ticket, please come to Germany, join the cities. You will, you will not regret it for sure. Excellent. Really looking forward to it. Marco, thank you very much for your time. Um, and giving us a, a short guide to each of those cities and, and Germany itself. Um, maybe we can speak a little bit more. If Maybe if people have got some questions for Germany, you'd be open to answering some of those. Yeah, for sure. Everybody is, is, is invited to contact me um, over, over my Facebook account. Uh, you can send me a friendship request. That's no problem. I am with my original name on Facebook. I am I am in, in, in friend in relationship in friend relationship I think with over thousand thousand England fans I'm on Instagram um, no problem you can write me um, about uh, England supporters travel club on Facebook it's no problem I will help everyone even uh, there's a situation where you need perhaps help or you need perhaps an, an advice uh, for a doctor or something like that don't hesitate. Um, to, to contact me, I'm not only an English fan, I'm an English brother um, and uh, with a German background, but I feel inside of me only English. And so I will help everyone as I can. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and don't, don't hesitate to contact me. That's, that's really super kind. Thank you very much, Marco. Let's, um, let's catch up as the, uh, as the, the tournament approaches. Okay. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I would love it. Yeah, for sure. So I can only say again to every England fan, please contact me. I will help you if I can. No problem. I will do it. Lovely. Marco, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank cool. you for the very, very brilliant interview. And I love it to be part of your podcast. You do a very, very brilliant job, Russell. My many thanks to Marco there for his time and insight and his offer of assistance for us um, for, for looking into info into Germany. Gentlemen, thank you. Uh, as he mentioned, he is on the England Facebook page. He's also on Instagram. Uh, and as I mentioned at the beginning of our chat, we've spoken on a couple of occasions before. We also met at the Germany home game in the Nations League a while back. Uh, that's me and him on the header photo for this episode on your social media feed. Uh, great guy. Uh, but if you'd want to hear on how he became an England fan, you'll have to go back to episode 90, April 2020. Uh, that would have been one of the lockdown episodes, I guess. Uh, it's a good listen, as they all are, even if I do say so myself. Um, all 300 of them. Did I say it was the 300th episode of this podcast? Uh, but it has been great hearing from him uh, and him painting a picture of each of those host cities. Cheers, Marco. Now, I got a nice message from Jeff Cuss, a listener. Thank you for your kind words. And one of the things he mentioned was, I've been following England all my life, but only in recent years have I started attending matches more recently. I've managed to get Serbia tickets. Well done. Nice one. So I'm now looking to finalise travel plans. Could you recommend some do's and don'ts of following England away? OK, uh, this is a good one. Cheers, Jeff. Um now, there's actually a thread on the England Supporters Forum, which is similar to this. There's a few in-jokes in there, but it's well worth a read. I've had a think about it. I've pinched a few from there. 
But if you head to englandsupporters.thefa.com, find the forum, then find the thread, Your Advice to New Members on England Aways. Now, whilst I didn't go to Qatar, I know many were conscious of the cultural differences. I don't think too many had issues. And whilst Germany will be fairly familiar to many of us, a bit of appreciation for them and their way of doing things goes a long way. So here are my own do's and don'ts from my own experience. Generally, they're just common sense. Some you you may agree with, some you may not. That's cool. But I feel that actually um, there's a piece of music that could go quite nicely with this. So, in no particular order, experience as much as you can. Sample the cuisine and local brew. You can get McDonald's all over the world. Take the opportunity to learn a bit of the local lingo, a bit of Guten Tag and Danke schön goes a long way and if it gets a little too complicated google translate is your friend basically treat people the way you would want to be treated yourself i hate to say it but as england fans we are still paying for previous misdemeanors from those in the 70s 80s and the 90s So anything you or I can do to change someone's perception is great, especially in the current climate. I'm no financial advisor, but I know there are some good free foreign transaction bank cards out there. A little bit of research might help you out. This one might be a bit of a pain, but print out your boarding passes and your accommodation address. Because when it comes to your phone, we have our life on these things, don't we? Uh, And I'll come to that in the don'ts. Now, personally, I find tournaments very sponsor, corporate heavy. I much prefer an away qualifier when you don't have the likes of MasterCard and Heineken breathing down your neck. So go and buy something local. Now, the FSA often do their guides to the tournaments, along with their free lions. And it often has a card at the back of it with various help numbers, embassies, all those sort of thing. Tear that out. Keep one of those in your wallet. When it comes to the game, leave your club loyalties at home. And speaking of the game... Give yourself plenty of time to get to each ground. We all know our time limits when rocking up at Wembley or our our local club game. But these are going to be three unfamiliar grounds for the vast majority of us. So just spare yourself a little bit more time. Don't need to rush. And then some don'ts. Germany. We all know the past, don't we? The Germans... They don't need to be reminded of it. Everyone is different, but I personally wouldn't go find the Irish bar in the town square with all the flags outside. It's just a magnet for your money and a potential target for trouble. Don't get too drunk and find yourself in an unfamiliar place on your own in the dark. I said these are common sense. Uh, And I also said about your phone, don't lose it your tickets will be on it your match ones and your flight tickets and probably some early pictures of your children keep hold of your phone Uh, back to the football don't abuse the opponent's national anthem we don't like it when they do it to us and lastly uh, people will say it's England away stand where you want Now, that may apply to a regular away qualifier or a friendly, but tournaments, they are different. Often, there will be people who are not following either team that's playing, but have got tickets through the UEFA ballots and 
just want to watch the game for what it is. They're entitled to their seat that they've paid for, even if you did get there before them. Well, there you go. I'm sure there are plenty more do's and don'ts that you can think of. Feel free to message me with your suggestions. I never thought I'd be incorporating Baz Luhrmann into the podcast at any point. don't know about you, but I always associate that track with summer weather, what with it being called sunscreen, or I think that was its unofficial title. So I hope it brought a little bit of uh, sunshine and, and warmth in this long month of January. Now, before I wrap up, obviously, I've been chatting with Marco about our group games. Just wanted to mention a few other England fans, those who have already organised coach trips to the games. Now, if you are still considering your options, these may be of help to you. I know that Mark from On The Ball Travel has organised coaches for both Serbia and Slovenia. You can find him at ontheballtravel.com. He's also on Twitter and Facebook. Paul Dennis is running ones for Serbia and Denmark. Again, find him on Facebook and also on Twitter at pauldennis1234. And finally, Chris Cannon is running coaches for all three group games. You can find him on the Facebook, the England Supporters Facebook page with all the details there. These are the ones that I'm aware of that are being organised. There may be a few more. Let me know. Uh, You will have to go and seek them out to see if they suit you and what your agenda is. Obviously, take into account pick-up locations, the times, the costs, all those sorts of things. But there's three options for you. As always, I take my hat off to anyone that organises these coaches, be it for a tournament game, a qualifier, or just home games. Fair play. Well done. That's it. Let's leave it there. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for listening to the past 300 episodes. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful too. Thank you to Marco. Don't forget you can follow the show on social media. Just search Three Lions Podcast. It's on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Facebook, Instagram, Threads. It's on YouTube too. You'll find it on all of those. A follow, a subscribe, a like, whatever you do. Thumbs up. Uh, Any of those would be great. And if you want to write an email... They are always welcome to three lions podcast at gmail.com. Look forward to hearing from you. So until the next time, which will be episode 301, take care of yourselves. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>